What's up, comic book community? My name is Joe, and this is 360 Comics. Earlier this week, I got a call from a guy whose collection I purchased last year, but it turns out I didn't get everything. As he was preparing to move this week, he came across two more paper grocery bags stacked full of comics. I pulled out the best ones to show you today, so stay tuned. I'll be picking a winner this Sunday for our 8,000 follower giveaway over on Instagram. If you want a chance to win this spawn number one, go give us a follow on Instagram and check out the post about this giveaway and see how to enter. And of course, we also have a 2,500 subscriber giveaway right here on YouTube for this book right here. Edge of Spider-Verse number one, the one in 25 Ramos variant. And I'll be picking a winner for this as soon as we hit 2,500 subscribers. So make sure you subscribe, give this video a thumbs up for a like, and leave a comment down below. And check out our other videos like them and comment on them for additional entries. Good luck. Those of you who have been following this channel for a long time may remember all the way back to November of last year, 2021, I purchased the collection that I dubbed the Epic Collection. I was pretty new to buying full collections at that point, and uh, up until then, that was the biggest and best collection that I had ever come across. Now, since then, I have blown that out of the water. I've bought 20, 25, 30 long box collection. I've spent uh, tons more money than I bought on on uh, you know this this much smaller Epic Collection. But one thing still stands out from that collection, and that is that there was a Hulk one. Eighty-one in there, the first full appearance of Wolverine, and that book still remains in my personal collection to this day, uh, definitely going to get graded at some point soon, so look out for that when we'll do an unboxing, um, but interesting thing about that collection, there was a hard stop in 1984, I believe it was, and I talked to the guy a little bit, and he said that's the year he got married, bought a house, all that stuff, so it makes sense to put a hobby on the back burner. Well, he found some more stuff, and as you could probably tell, uh, it was more recent stuff. It was uh, from 1989 to 1991, so it seems like he had kind of settled into married life and stuff and gotten back into his hobby of buying comics, and then there's a hard stop in 1991 with this batch of comics, which is the year his first child was born. So it makes sense that, again, comics went on the back burner for some other, you know, family thing. Uh, anyway, um, let's get into it. This guy was a comic book reader, not really into collecting, preserving, no bags and boards. Everything kind of ranges from mid-grade to, like, maybe like some books pushing the the 9.0 there is nothing in this collection that is going to be submitted to cgc nothing that's really high grade and, and good condition um pretty much all this stuff is going to be sold at a nice discount because of the condition uh so look out for this stuff in claim sales if you're interested in getting it but first up we've got infinity gauntlet number one classic george perez cover uh classic storyline from the early 1990s can't go wrong with that it didn't have the whole run um it, there was one two five and six so gotta find three and four somewhere and throw it in with this uh i in my you know inventory i've got a bunch of infinity gauntlet issues just got to go through and find the right ones to get them together in a group um then we've got amazing spider-man number 118 not really a key but it's one of the todd mcfarland spider-man covers and a lot of people collect this run just specifically for todd mcfarland's covers um You'll also note that this was a newsstand. Pretty much every book in this was a newsstand. He clearly was, uh, you know, buying off, uh, you know, a newsstand at that point, not not buying at a comic book store. Um, something to note. You know, the Infinity Gauntlet was not a newsstand, though I noticed, but there were there were a couple in there that weren't, but most of them are. You'll see. Uh, then we got Spectacular Spider-Man number. Is this one eighteen as well? Oh, no, 178, sorry. Uh, 178, first appearance of Ashley Kafka. I picked this up in just my last video. Um, so I got a couple copies of these now. I'm going to have to... Uh send them uh, or put them out in the, the claim sales coming up. Then we got Spider-Woman number one. This is probably staying in the personal collection because uh, I don't have a newsstand copy of this, but this is uh, the first solo Julia Carpenter Spider-Woman run. This is the second iteration of Spider-Woman. And I honestly, I like her suit a lot more, the, the all black suit or black and white suit rather than um, the original Jessica Drew red suit. Um, then we got <laughs> this is one a little spec book, maybe West Coast Avengers number. What is this? 48, I think 40, 46, man. I'm off on my numbers today. Um, 
first appearance of the Great Lake Avengers, kind of like a more comedic, funny parody, but nonetheless, uh, still possibly could show up in the MCU, and we'd probably see a little bump in uh, value of this book if that did happen, even if it was just a little comedic cameo. Then we got Guardians of the Galaxy number one. This is the uh, the re reboot from the 90s of Guardians of the Galaxy, and uh, you know, People like this book. It holds some value. This this run, uh, you know, there was a lot of people that like, but it went really far. Um, and most of the later issues are, are pretty worthless. There's a couple keys here and there. But the first issue of the run does hold some value. I think this actually... Is this the first solo title? Because I think Guardians were, like, in other titles, but they didn't really have their own title, right? I might be wrong about that. Let me know in the comments below if you know. Uh, then we got Fantastic Four number 246. Uh, I'm going to be off on that number. It's like 300 something. 346. Man, I'm really, I'm not batting a thousand here. Uh, this is the first, I think it's first cameo mention of the TVA, the Time Variance Authority. Um, one of those Loki related keys that popped last year. There were a bunch of those for Silver Surfer in here. This one. Also is a, a similar one. I believe this is the first cameo appearance of uh, Mobius M. Mobius, Owen Wilson's character. And I think it also has something to do with like the, the Minutemen, like maybe first appearance of the, the Minutemen or something like that. This is the good one, though. This is the one you want. This is the first appearance of Mobius in full. And it's got an amazing cover, which really, really, um, you know, that really helps the value of key issues is if they have a good cover, if especially one that you would want to display. And this is certainly a cover that I would want to display. Uh, interestingly enough, the um, direct edition of this has a little picture of Mobius in the box. Uh, this one doesn't, obviously, because it's a newsstand. Um, so I'm actually curious to see what the value difference on those are, because it might be that people prefer the direct edition to have that little picture of the character down there. Then we got Fantastic Four number 358. This is the first appearance of Pybok the Power Scroll. Um, finding this in a newsstand is pretty tough. I've only found, I think, one other one because this was, you know, later, not late 90s, but this was like more into the mid 90s and newsstands were a lot harder to find. This character is rumored to show up in Secret Invasion. We'll see if he does, but either way, it's a, you know, a th nice thick book, a cool die cut cover. Um, and, you know, just a, a minor key, even if the character never shows up. So I'm going to move these down here for a second and move on to some mutant-related keys. And we're going to get into some Wolverine. This is the classic Jim Lee cover that was utilized as the cover art for the X-Men video game for the original Nintendo Entertainment System. It is just such a classic cover. I had a poster of this as a kid and just, oh man, I love this cover. And, uh, and that video game is pretty sweet as well as, uh, as far as like a first attempt at an X-Men video game goes. Then we got, um, Marvel Comics presents 78, 79. Oh my gosh. I'm really, I'm really off today, guys. I apologize. I have not had enough coffee. Apparently, uh, this is one of the weapon X run books that, uh, was from issue 72 to 84. I'm probably saying that wrong again, but I know it starts with 72. This is the first full appearance of Wolverine, um, you know, emerged from the Weapon X program. He's got the helmet on too, um, and it's just a phenomenal cover. Other than the first Weapon X book, which is issue 72, this one is definitely the most valuable of all of them. It's not a super expensive book, but just a cool Wolverine minor key. Then we got X-Men number 239, first cover appearance and second full appearance of Mr. Sinister. We all wish that this was the cover for his first appearance, but nonetheless, it's still a great cover. It's still a great significance. Uh, this is probably the lowest grade book out of all of them. In fact, I'm probably just going to put this up for like five bucks in my next claim sale because it's, um, you know, it's got some condition issues to it. So I'll figure someone will want that and uh, get it pretty cheap. Then we got X-Men number 248. Didn't want to be wrong on this one. First art on X-Men by Jim Lee. This is prior to him taking over that 90s run of X-Men at issue number one. This is the um, first time he did art. Uh, great cover. There is a second printing of this one with a different color background, more of a gold background. So look out for that. Um, but this is definitely a book that 
I do want in a 9.8 newsstand at some point. This one will not make the cut, though, unfortunately. So, uh, you know, this one will be up for grabs. Uh, another Jim Lee cover here, X-Men number 268. Oh, I was right this time. Woo! Thank goodness. I'm usually pretty good on those numbers, but a little, little sleepy today. Uh, this is the issue where Wolverine, Black Widow, and Captain America realize that they... Um, or, or no, it, not realize, but they re they reveal that they fought together during World War II. They're all featured on the cover. Excellent Jim Lee cover, in my opinion. So that's always one that collectors do look for. Uh, then we've got the second appearance, or rather the first full appearance of Bishop in X-Men number 283. Uh, this is... The, it's the first full, but he is on the cover of that first cameo, so that is the book that holds the most value. This one still has a little bit of value because, um, you know, it's his first full appearance. Then we got X-Factor number one, first full appearance of the X-Factor team. I believe they're only mentioned before this. X-Factor is mentioned in a, a, a like... Uh, in, in, as in, like a cameo mention, but they're never seen together until this first issue. This book, in my opinion, kind of undervalued. You can get it for like ten bucks in in a in pretty nice shape. So uh, this one's got some issues. I'll probably put this up for like five bucks or seven bucks in the next claim sale. Uh, going back a little bit, these are the best books. We're on to the the last. What are there? The last five. These are the, these are the best five in the bunch. Uh, X Men two eighty two first cameo appearance of Bishop. This is the Bishop book you want. It is a newsstand as well, which is pretty nice. Can't complain about that. Um, and yeah, I'm hoping this character shows up and is done well in the the future mutant um, world of the MCU. Then we got X Factor number six. This is the first full appearance of um, Apocalypse. This, I think, is an undervalued book for a couple reasons. One, this is a pretty major villain, uh, a villain that not only has like major ties to the X-Men and just mutants in general is one of the most significant mutants ever, but also has a tie to um, Egypt and... And a lot of characters in, in X-Men, whether it's, you know, Storm or Moon Knight, have ties to Egypt and they can be worked in together. It is extremely surprising that this book has plummeted so much. You know, obviously the movie was not good. This book spiked up a ton, but it, it came down so hard that it probably was worth less after the movie came out than like a year or two before it came out. I'm not sure about those numbers, but it seems like it to me. This book, I think, undervalued. I'll probably be just holding on to this one. Um, actually, i got to see how many I have because uh, I do stockpile this book for sure. Uh, then we've got X-Men number 244, First Appearance of Jubilee. This is a book I have a ton of copies of. I'm talking like 20 plus, something like that. Um you know, Jubilee is a character that I grew up loving in the X-Men animated series, and um, she really wasn't utilized in, in you know, in a good way in the X-Men, uh, the, the movies uh, from Fox. So I think that they're going to play on a lot of 90s nostalgia and, you know, possibly use that character in a more significant role in the MCU. I'm hoping so, because I think she's not only a really interesting character in general, but, um, you know, she, she adds, she adds adds a, a little touch given that she's like a, a teenage female character i think that, that she can really get a lot of younger people younger girls into comic books that would not be into them otherwise we'll wait and see if that happens but either way great book um and then we're moving on to the first appearance of gambit the true first appearance of gambit this is uh x-men annual 14 and no x-men 266 not first appearance of gambit that book came out um after this one although it does take place chronologically storyline wise uh before this book it, it was a, a printing thing but this was gambit's first appearance in comic books it certainly is not the book that is uh you know the most valued with gambit because the other one has a much much better cover uh so people um gravitate to that book sort of like the uh the instance with uh with bishop and speaking of that other cover we got it right here this was the best book in the bunch we got x-men number 266 the uh second appearance of gambit or rather the first 
full you know cover appearance of Gambit. I don't know what you want to call it, but it's it's second appearance, first cover appearance. It's awesome. It's the book people want for this character, and I don't blame them whatsoever, despite it not really being his first appearance. Um, it's a newsstand. That helps it a little bit, but the condition is not super high on it, so this will be not be a book that I am keeping. This will be up for grabs in the next claim sale. That being said, let's talk money. Um, given that this stuff had condition issues, everything was red, nothing was high-grade, um, you know, I, I kind of said, hey, hey, what do you want for it? Um, and he threw out the number, hey, I'll take 50 bucks if you if you want, you know, that for everything. And I didn't try to haggle, didn't, you know, didn't come back with a counter off or anything. Seemed more than fair, you know. I, I'm probably, I probably got just a loan with these books, over $100 in value. And then, um, you know, the rest of the stuff is really just going in, in the dollar bins. It's all you know, mid-grade to mid-high grade nineties filler issues. So that stuff is uh not really valued, but I'm sure I'm sure I will uh make some money here. Uh despite these books not being super valuable, a lot of them are ones that people really do want, especially uh the you know mutant related, X-Men related stuff that uh has potential with the MCU appearances of those characters. So anyway that's it for this video today. Please go follow on Instagram, hit that subscribe button, like the video, leave a comment, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, I will be back for um, a claim sale Thursday night and Friday night this weekend on Instagram. And then next weekend, I'm going to do a couple of sales in between uh, Christmas and New Year. And I might do some like themed ones. So we'll we'll see about that. But this Friday night, particularly, um, James from Mint Hunter Comics will be over and we will be doing a claim sale of all $5 books. So every book is going to be five bucks. And if you buy at least five books, the price goes down to $4 a book. So, you know, you, you pick out five books, you don't pay $25, you end up paying $20 plus shipping. And, uh, you know, it goes up from there, just $4 a book after that, um, no matter how many you claim. Even if you claim 100 books, it would be 400 bucks. Um, that being said, that's it. That's all I got to say. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, turn the page, wash your hands.